Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to EB Yoga. This is Yoga 101, class number four, all about back bends and twists. We'll begin with some warm ups, take a couple rounds of Sun A, and then we'll get a little bit deeper into some back bend and twist poses. The main thing I would like for you to understand in this class is that the back bends and twists that you see on social media and yoga magazines and such, most of those poses are past what is our safe functional range of motion for our spine. I don't know about you, but I want to take care of my spine so that I can walk normally and still bend over and pick things up off the ground when I'm older. Pushing our spine past its limit to get into some of these back bends and twists, it just there isn't any benefit to it. You might think you're getting a benefit of a fancy pose you can post on your social media, but you're not benefiting your body. We need to take care of our spines, which means we need to respect the range of motion that they should twist and back bend into. So there are just flat out poses I don't teach. The main thing I hope you remember from class today is how far your body moves in these poses and that you take that knowledge with you as you progress in your yoga practice so that you can keep your spine safe. We're going to work on building our muscles. Having a strong core is very important. That doesn't mean that we have to get our head to touch our feet with a big back bend. So if you like a blanket under your knees for tabletop, grab that, have a block handy for some of the twist poses we'll come to later, and I will meet you on the mat. Grab your blanket if you like that under knees or wrists in your tabletop. And you might notice I start every class warming up our spine with these cat and cow and barrel roll stretches. So as you move through these, notice how your spine feels. I never direct anybody to go to a certain extent in these poses, but it's just always what feels good for you. So as we take these stretches, just notice. And then when we get into some of our other back bends and twists later, we can pay attention to how those feel as well. Taking cat and cow. Inhale, let your belly sink down. Exhale, pull your belly in around your spine. Move with your breath. Include your head and your tail if that feels good in this stretch. Always take an opportunity to hold a pose if you want an extra stretch there. Let's take about three more cat and cows. Begin to transition to your barrel roll, ribs to the side, belly down to the other side, round it up. One more circle in this direction, slow it down. And then pause, barrel roll the opposite way. Slow the roll again, one more circle here. And coming back to tabletop, wiggle up your shoulders if you need to. Bring your hands a little bit closer together underneath you, preparing for our alternating arm circles. Inhale your right arm up, exhale it down and switch. Inhale your left arm up, exhale it down, switch again. Three more breaths with each arm. And again, up to you how big you make this. Is that three? We'll do one more for good measure. Come 
Coming back to table. Let's head to downward dog. Curl your toes, lift your hips. Bend and straighten your knees if that feels good. Take about five breaths here. Begin to walk your dog forward, walk your hands back. Bend your knees, forward fold. Sway a little side to side if you'd like. Begin to put a big bend in your knees, roll your body all the way up. Shake out anything you need to shake out. Find your way to the top of your mat. At the top of your mat, finding your mountain pose. Check in with your knees facing forward. Feet go whatever direction feels comfortable for the ankles. Knees line up under the hips. Hips feel balanced left to right, front to back. A little lift up through the head, shoulders relax. Hands face whichever direction feels good. Three breaths in mountain pose. Beginning sun salutation A will take about three rounds. Next, inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, bend your knees, hinge and fold. Inhale, lengthen out your spine. Exhale, step back and lower down. Inhale your back bend. Exhale, down dog. And always remember you can add any modifications you like to your sun salutations. I just usually don't have the breath to say all of them for every round we do, so. Take another breath in down dog. As you exhale, start to walk your feet forward. When your feet and hands meet, inhale, lengthen out, and exhale, fold. Big bend in your knees, root down, rise up. Round two, exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step back and lower. Inhale your back bend, exhale down dog. Next exhale, walk your feet forward. When your feet and hands meet, inhale, exhale fold. Bend your knees, root down, rise up. One more round. Exhale, hinge and fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step back, lower down. Inhale your back bend. Exhale, down dog. One more breath. With your exhale, begin to walk forward. Inhale, lengthen out, and exhale, fold. Bend your knees, root your feet, rise up. Exhale, hands to heart or by your side. Thank you for joining us, Penny. Today's class is twists and back bends. Now we'll make our way down to our belly for a few back bends there. Inhale, reach your arms. Exhale, fold over. Plant your hands, drop back to table, and then lower to your belly. Stay there on your belly. I just wanted to come up for one second to show you my goniometer, which helps us measure the angles that we're moving our joints in. I do a lot more discussion about this and how to use a goniometer video and also what the heck is hypermobile. <laughs> So 25 degrees is about what we're looking at for our back bend. So if this is my body lying flat down here at this flat part, 
This is how much my torso is going to lift up. That's how big that back bend's going to be, only 25 degrees. Let's take a look at our Sphinx pose. Tucking our elbows under our shoulders, maybe a little more wide if that's a little more comfortable. And then noticing how this feels in our spine. I would say my spine is definitely arching back 25 degrees. So this back bend is actually kind of a big one. That's why I don't really encourage anybody to do upward dog or I'll get there in a minute. So for Sphinx is a wonderful back bend and don't ever feel like you're wimpy if Sphinx is as far as you go. Sphinx is awesome. Take one more breath here and then release this back bend, stack your hands and rest your head down. Maybe tilt your head over toward me so I can show you my goniometer here. So you can see there Lying flat, that's about how much I'm going to lift up, about as much as I'm lifted up right here. Begin to lift your head. Bring your hands by your shoulders for cobra. If you haven't played around with different hand positions here, maybe take the time to do that now. I think we've done this pose in all the Yoga 101 classes. Shoulders drop a little bit down, elbows hug a little bit in, and inhale, press up. Again, Thinking about that 25 degrees, I'm definitely at that now, I would say. I really don't go any bigger than this in my personal practice for my back bends. And it's not because I can't, because I'm hypermobile, you know, but doing stuff like this isn't benefiting my spine and it actually sometimes leave, leaves my back sore the next day. So for me, this kind of cobra where I can pick up my hands, I know I'm using my muscles, the back muscles definitely are sore after a lot of locusts and cobra days. Take another breath with cobra and then let it go. Drop your hands, rest your head. And beginning to lift our body up, locust. Hands back by our sides, inhale, lifting your head and chest. And you might notice my cobra and my locust are the same amount of bend in my back. So I've demonstrated this before that whenever I'm in cobra, I can pick my hands up because I'm using my muscles. So it makes sense that my cobra is about as big as my locust since this is all muscle. And it, with locust, if feet feel like going up, let them happen. But if it, sometimes that starts to pinch into my lower back, it's totally not worth it. Let's take one more breath here, maybe a gentle lift, and then stack your hands, rest your head. Begin to lift your head. So this next pose I'm going to show you, I don't teach this pose and I don't recommend doing this pose, but it is a pose that is very common, so I have to talk about it. Upward facing dog. From here on our belly, upward dog tells us that our hands should be under our shoulders, the tops of our feet press, and all of our weight ends up on our palms and the top of our feet. Can you see what's going on in my lower back? Now my legs aren't touching the ground, so all of that pressure is right there in my lower back. I'm gonna set this down. So it's just not a good pose for anybody's back. I know I have students who still do it and they say it doesn't hurt, or maybe it feels a little stretchy. It's really not sustainable long-term. I did up dog for years, and I've also had lower back issues for years. So as I've deepened my study of anatomy, I'm really coming to understand how operating within the functional range of motion is what is best for our body. So that is how I teach and how I recommend you practice. I'm not the yoga police by any means, so if you're doing poses that are outside your functional range, you know, I don't know and I can't stop you. But I'm asking you to please not. Because <laughs> I want to practice yoga together for a lot more years. Another pose I don't teach a ton because it's hard for a lot of people is bow pose. I like locust because locust, we're using our muscles, we're lifting ourselves up. Now with bow pose, we bend our knees, grab our feet, and then I press my feet into my hand and that pulls my chest up a little further. So 
I'm using some of the muscles in my legs to pull my chest further into a back bend, which means I might end up going past the range I want to go in. So it's just not my favorite pose to teach. Also, you need a lot of flexibility here in your shoulder to reach all the way back with both sides and pull the feet. So I don't really do that pose a lot, but figured I'd throw it out there since we were here on our bellies. I'll show you one more back bend here. Again, it's not one that I teach a lot because I just think it takes a lot of us past the range of motion that our spines should go in. Camel pose is basically bow pose on the knees. So what you just saw me do on my belly, reaching back, grabbing my feet, big arch in the spine, exact same thing right here. So again, it's past our range for a lot of people, takes that shoulder flexibility, and then also we're using gravity to come into this back bend. Gravity is pulling my weight down to my feet. Um, occasionally, I might modify this pose with hands at our lower back, trying to get a lot of support there with our lower back, and then pushing our hips forward and gently arching up. To me, that is a gentle and safe camel. I may add that into class here and there. But my favorite back bends are Sphinx, Cobra, and Locust. Let's talk twists for a moment here. Goniometer is back out. So how far can our spine twist? Well, without moving our hips, only moving from our spine, we go about 30 degrees. Check that out on my goniometer. 30 degrees is a very small slice of pie that I'm going to twist. We can make ourselves twist further by leveraging with our elbows, which you might see in a lot of classes. Also, anybody who's hypermobile and has that extra flexibility can usually get their lower back, their SI joints to move. Those joints are only supposed to move a couple millimeters, very few degrees. Unfortunately, hypermobile people can make them go further, and I truly believe that is a huge source of lower back pain in the yoga world. I know it is a part of mine. And now my SI joints crack and pop every day because of the years I spent pushing them past range to get into these twists and back bends. That... So let's talk about some twists and how we can make these gentle and accessible to our bodies. Come back to tabletop and grab one of your blocks. From tabletop, bring your right foot forward to low lunge. Adjust your feet as needed. Bring your block under your left hand, left hand under your left arm. Inhale your right arm up, twist. If this feels like it's twisting you too far, right hand can stay down here. You see that I'm not twisting as much. And this block under your left hand, you may or may not need. But if I put my hand down on the ground, it feels like I'm twisting more. Hand up on the block, my twist feels a little gentler. Take another breath. Exhale your right hand down. Curl your back toes under. Come up into runner's lunge. And we'll twist again. Left hand on the block under your left shoulder. Inhale your right arm up. Again, if this feels like too much for you, hand on your thigh, a little bit of opening. We can modify these all day long. Take one more breath here. Exhale your right hand down. Begin to find your balance on your back toes. Begin to rise up, high lunge. Keep a bend in that back knee. To twist up here in high lunge is unfortunately one of those ones where I see a lot of people doing these big giant twists, hooking the elbow. Ugh. It's not good. <laughs> we want to keep that gentle, think 30 degrees. I'm going to twist about this far. How the heck is this elbow going to get on the other side of this knee and then open up? No. So when I do a high lunge twist, I'm only going about this far. I'm usually using this as some sort of core stability. So it's not so much as twisting the spine as using our core to keep us stable up here, a little strength exercise. Bring your torso forward, hands to the ground. Hop your back foot in. Roll your body up to stand. Chair pose twist. Bend your knees, sink your hips, reach your arms. 
This is another pose where we are instructed to take this opposite elbow, hook it to the outside of that knee, and open up into this big twist. And for our spine, we have to round it and then twist it and then extend. It's, it's too much. <laughs> so when I take a chair twist, it is super gentle. I don't expect your right elbow to go further than your right knee. Right elbow, right knee, and twist. And again, when I do this in class, it's usually as a core strengthener. Let go of your chair, come up to stand. Make your way back down to table again. Forward fold, bend your knees. Slow lunge with your left foot forward. Block under your right hand. Adjust your feet as needed. Right hand roots down under your right shoulder. Inhale your right arm up. Take another breath here. Exhale your left hand down. Curl your back toes under. Runner's lunge twist. Inhale your left arm up. And runner's lunge twist can always be done with the knee down like low lunge too. So if that ever is intense for you in any classes, remember that option. Take another breath and exhale your left hand down. Preparing for high lunge. If you want to hop that back foot in a little bit, bend the back knee, pull your torso up. Hands to heart. Little tiny twist, keep your core activated, keep your balance. One more time each side. And exhale, fold your torso over your leg. Step back to table and let's come to sit. Maybe have your block handy here for some of these seated twists. I have short arms that don't quite touch the ground. So for me, a lot of times a block helps me reach and helps prevent me from overextending in some of these twists, which we're going to try not to overextend anyway. So seated twists come with a whole variety of leg variations. More complicated cross leg things like this, and then totally simple twists like this. Naturally, I like to keep it a little simple. So we're gonna take a simple twist, but these twisting principles apply to any leg configuration that you might find in any other yoga class. Starting with a simple seated twist, legs extend out, Right leg bends, right foot is flat. I take my right hand behind me and that's where I like that block. Otherwise, it's harder for me to reach the ground. And without using leverage from my left arm, I lift up, lengthen out my spine a little bit, and I gently twist open to the right. And that's about as far as I go. If you take your left hand and use that as leverage, I can crank quite a bit further, but I'm not, like I said, doing any good for my back. <laughs> So a gentle twist, that's perfect. That's all your spine needs. Take another breath here. And switch legs. Bend your left knee in, left hand to your block. Gentle lift, gentle twist. Another breath and unwind back to the front. Let's make our way down onto our backs. Spinal twists are often done at the end of class in a lying reclined position like this. Unfortunately, even though those poses seem relaxing and stretchy, they're oftentimes very much past our range of motion. Think about that 30 degrees. If I was to take 30 degree, like this is way more than 30 degrees. And then we tell people to stretch their arms out like that. 
So whenever I teach reclining twist, I often have a block under the knees. Let your knees fall over to your block. Pretty gentle, huh? So if you have that block here, let's grab that restorative bridge. Slide the block under your lower back. Let your back rest down. Restorative bridge can be do done with your block a little bit higher if that feels good. I don't really recommend going all the way up. I just think it's kind of unnecessary. By all the way up, I mean block tall way. Take another breath or two with your restorative bridge. And pick up your hips, slide your block out, lower your spine down. Give your spine at least a breath or two flat on your mat. And then if you would like to bend your knees in, take a few circles, a little rock. And then let's take a moment or two in constructive rest. Drop your feet down, take them wide, like as wide as your yoga mat. Knees fall in together. Arms, whatever's comfortable for you. See if you can maybe relax your shoulders. And close your eyes, taking a couple breaths to relax. Make your next breath deeper. Begin to blink your eyes open. Start to stretch your arms up, stretch your legs down. Begin to roll to your side. Take a breath or two on your side. And gently press your body up to sit. All right, we made it through class number four. One more class to go. I hope this class was informative. I know that when I started learning about the range of motion our spine had and then looking at these yoga poses that were like so dramatic and so far past what is safe, it was quite an eye opener. And um, my lower back feels a lot better now that I've stopped putting my body in those positions that are past that range. It takes some work to shut down the ego because I know my body can do those poses, but I also know they're not benefiting me and it's just kind of a show off thing. So again, that's me saying ego, quiet down. Let's do what's good and safe for our body. If you have any questions about this, feel free to leave it in the comments below. I hope to see you back for Yoga 101, class number five. Thank you so much for joining me. I truly appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. Namaste.